Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you for joining me again today. My name is General Confusion, and this is Ultimate General Civil War. And specifically, this is the Battle of Fredericksburg, the second part, the defense at Mary's Heights. So here we are, strung out behind the stone wall up on the heights. We have some other defensive positions behind us. Statham and Siegfried are moving forward, and over here we have the Union Army, led by Couch. This isn't, of course, the whole army. This is merely uh, the right Grand Division, uh, with the center Grand Division presumably to follow from the heights over here. So the left Grand Division, a short time ago, punched a hole through our lines. Uh, we managed to hold them off and inflict very heavy casualties, but they are nonetheless there, and we are going to have to deal with them. Up here, we have Cabell moving up to take Richard's place. Richard's is moving back uh, because he is a small unit. Statham, meanwhile, will be coming over to take Maney's place. Maney is also moving back and for the same reason, but I'm not going to retreat him just yet in case Hawkins and Ferrero dash forward. Uh, McLean, Deering, and Penrose are kind of set up here. I maybe want to put Deering in those fortifications. No, Deering is already in his own fortifications, so that's fine. I might want to put Frank in those fortifications, but I kind of want him over here. This is a little bit worrisome. There's a position up here on the hill that I don't have the men to hold unless I send one of my few reserve units over to hold it. I could send Siegfried. I do trust Siegfried on independent deployment, but at the same time, at the same time, there's a lot of Union soldiers coming in. I'm going to send Siegfried over to there. And have him run. Richards is going to take position there. Cabell, take that fortified position. And here they come, boys. So this is going to be just an exercise in holding ground. Um, I don't have many by way of reserves. All I have has to hold the line. We just, we just hold the line. The Union will come in against us, and we will shoot them. It'll be interesting to see how this works. I imagine that the Union are going to be launching mass charges in the way that they did recently. Uh, and if so, this is going to get very bloody very quickly. Because the fact of the matter is, I just can't withstand many mass charges. Uh, Maney should actually get into those buildings where he has better cover. Uh, I mean, my men will, in these defensive positions, my men will give very, very good accounts of themselves. But, they are vulnerable to being outflanked, and they're vulnerable to just being charged. Like, Statham over here, 2,500 men, if these four units all charged Statham, he would die. And it looks like two of them are charging him. So Maney is going to have to help hold with support fire. Stop. There we go, there we go, that's the way. Break him. Okay, it doesn't look like they're flanking to my north yet. But I don't want to move Siegfried and Kemper. I want them to hold there. Um, I'll use them as reserves if I have to. Let's get Richards over to the center. Why are you coming out of your fortified positions? Alright, Ferraro and Harland have been beaten off. Zook is being beaten off. Don't take that the wrong way. You know that's not what I meant. So, the initial charge has failed disastrously. Harland, why won't you... Yes, thank you. Unlimber and start to fire, please. 
But here comes the next wave. See, this is the problem with this battle, historically speaking. The Union had absolutely overwhelming numbers. Now, they have a terrible tactical position, and no assault across this ground should survive in a, you know, a reasonably historical world. Unfortunately, this is a game. It's not a reasonably historical world. And changes have been made for balance purposes, like the fact that mass infantry charges across open ground will actually reach the lines. Um, the Union did this. The Union launched mass infantry advances and charges across open ground, and it didn't work because the fact is that men are not machines and they won't do this. Um, even if they're not taking all that many casualties overall, they simply won't launch attacks of this kind. So, um, I'm going to move Frank up, by the way. I could use the artillery. But down here is where I'm actually worried. The north, it looks like, well, mm, I speak too soon. Never mind, Frank. Stay there, where you're in a flanking position. Alright, we're going to have to take out Carr next. Carr and Hall. Come on, Mahoney, get that volley. Yeah, there's that volley. There's the volley I wanted. No, why are you blocked? No, don't charge. Oh, come on, unlimber. Alright, Richards is firing. Mahoney is holding. Statham is holding. We're gonna need more reserves, though. All my reserves are already committed. I'm just stretched too thin. Mahoney and Statham are holding like heroes. Cabell has barely been engaged. Wilcox has scored a lot of kills, but, um, not been fought much. All right, I'm gonna move Kemper down. Siegfried will have to hold the flank. Bristow, get down here. Cromwell, get down here. Keep Mahoney's spirits up. I, I, I don't need Mahoney to break at the moment. That is the last thing that I need. So this is basically what this part of the battle is going to be. Wave assaults. Wave after wave. Harland. General John Harland. Who's that? Uh, I don't know who that was who was just wounded. Maney's scoring some kills. Shooting through that little gap right there between the units. Richards and Kemper, take out Warren before he closes in, please. No, stop. I did not mean for you to charge forward. Richards, just shoot. Yeah, there we go. Now Warren's running. Perfect. What are my casualties like? Already almost 5%. But Mahoney's back up to almost perfect morale, which is what I need. If we stay like this, if it continues being a shootout with... Min oh, no. Okay, no, Siegfried have to hold there. K uh, Kemper, take that position. I don't know what broke Cabell, but... Hopefully he comes back. I may actually want to detach some skirmishers. You wouldn't think this is a situation where you'd want skirmishers, because this is a pure line fight. But I may actually want to detach some just to... Uh... Alright, Cabell, take that position. Just to basically provide more coverage and more distraction. Where my... So that my main units won't be getting shot at all the time. So let's get Cabell's skirmishers up there. Actually, let's get Cabell up there. And his skirmishers, just to make sure to hold the line effectively. Um, Maney has a thousand kills already. Richards has 450. So Cabell can form up here and provide flanking fire on anyone who comes after Kemper. 
Nobel's skirmishers, meanwhile, can move forward and provide harassing fire. Down here in the south. All right, I am going to fast forward some because otherwise we're just going to be sitting here for 20 minutes and not much is going to happen that we haven't already seen. Here comes Warren. That charge isn't going to go well for him since he's charging alone. If the whole line charged at once, just the way the mechanics of this game work, if the whole line charged, I would break. I would be lost. Uh, in a way that historically, you know, is not, would not be accurate. But, um, unfortunately for me, this is not necessarily a historically accurate game. Holy crap, Siegfried. Working it. Alright, Harland is moving to flank me. So, what I have to do about that is... Detach some skirmishers from Statum. And move them down here. Statum, you are earning your stripes today. No, 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 Get into position, get into position. There we go. I may have to move Harland down to support Statum directly. I think Mahoney can hold. Mahoney has all the artillery behind him. Over here on the flank. Okay, see, that's kind of what I'm afraid of. Sully is, has been driven off, but I think he's going to come in on my flank. So Siegfried, get over there. Cabell, take that line. Got to extend the line somehow. If you hear sipping noises, please excuse me. I brought my peppermint tea in with me. Nothing like some warm peppermint tea for a cozy Civil War battle. Cabell's skirmishers are giving good account of themselves. Kemper is definitely giving a good account of himself, but then I expect that of Kemper. Wilcox, Richards, all right, time to fast forward again for a little bit. Let's see who's the next unfortunate to charge. Harland is now in the river. Who did Harland? He's in the river. Statham skirmishers. Mm. Rejoin. That wasn't a good decision. Okay. Kemper is driving them off as they come in. Wow, Andrews. Unless Andrews and Palmer and Platt all started as very small units, which I don't think they did, actually. They have been absolutely massacred. Holy crap. Goodbye, Andrews. I'm surprised the unit didn't break entirely. See, this is the situation I wanted. This situation where the enemy units are just breaking as they come back in because their morale is just too low to push an assault forward against this kind of resistance. You've got ammo, you've got ammo, why don't you move up here? See, we have these supply depots as well that our artillery are drawing from, and it's keeping them fully supplied, which is hugely, hugely important. Here comes Robinson. There goes Robinson. Mahoney has already scored 2,200 kills and shows no signs of stopping. Meanwhile, Harland is just sitting in the river being a nuisance. Okay, Maney, come back up here where you may be able to contribute a little more. Okay, so now the enemy is moving to flank me. Fortunately, with Siegfried over here, Siegfried has pretty good shots, and Siegfried has taken zero casualties so far. The Siegfried can reach quite a ways with those guns, uh, especially with the CS Richmond rifles, which have very good range. So, he's able to protect the flank fairly effectively. Um, I could split off some skirmishers from Siegfried and put them in this area, but I'm afraid that if I did that, that would actually draw the Union over to fight them. Whereas right now, the Union is being drawn towards my lines. Which is just fine. Ah, there's Harland. That was who Harland was. Okay, so Harland has taken a battering. Um... It's mainly, I think, it's overfire from the infantry that is hitting him. Um, but you know what? It's okay. I'm just going to leave him there. 
Yeah, all of my frontline units are well over a thousand kills. Most of them appear to be at or about around 2,000, actually. Up, oh, Kemper is breaking. Okay, Caldwell. You gotta fill the hole. Siegfried has to stay over there. We're gonna have to rely on Frank and Cabell's skirmishers to plug the gap. Once Kemper comes back, we'll put Kemper over there as well. But we can't let Willow be Wilcox be flanked like that. Come on, Cabell, get into cover, get in there, get in there. Oh no. Oh no. He survived. Cromwell, get up to the north flank. Kemper. There goes Cabell. I I exposed him too much. I shouldn't have let him become exposed like that. We need support back up there. Uh, the attack down here has just failed. Harland is the only remaining sign of that attack, and he's just sort of sitting over there, terrified to do anything. Which is exactly what I want. Haney, move up, see if you can get some shots. Kemper is back in line. Cabell. Cabell will be back in line momentarily. Butterfield is trying to lead a flanking force, but is having real trouble because of Siegfried. And it's all basically going according to plan. This is more or less what I wanted. So long as Kemper can hold. Kemper's already taken about 300 casualties, which is too bad. About 300 there, about 300 there. 450 in Mahoney and 375 in Staten. That's because they were subject to those charges. I've lost 12.5% of my army, um, but I really don't have another option. This is the best defensive position I can hold. We're going to speed up time again for a little bit. There's Carr moving across the front like he hasn't a care in the world. That will come back to bite him in just a moment. Yep, there it goes. It bit him. So historically, these positions were also occupied, and they weren't really strongly attacked. Um, the Union mainly just made charges across towards Mary's Heights, which was, you know, a very poor decision. But uh, somewhat understandable. It was more or less all that Burnside could think to do. Get Bristow over there to provide some... No, Bristow. Provide some ammunition to Siegfried. We've still got Harland just standing there. While Statham closes in on his 3,000th kill. Up. Shoot Nagley. Shoot him, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. Yep, Nagley didn't like that. Didn't like that at all. As I said, if they were pushing in mass charges, uh, they would win very quickly. If they were pushing in mass charges in the way that they did in the attack on the south, I'm not sure why they're not doing so here. Uh, it's something to do with the way the AI is programmed. Um, and I mean, this kind of engagement is much more realistic in the sense that, you know, mass charges of that kind didn't occur, don't occur with real-life soldiers, and were quickly broken up historically when they were tried. Uh, you know, Pickett's Charge is probably the most famous historical example of someone trying something like that. But the way the game is, I think the, the game AI would overall be stronger if they tried things like that, just because that's what works in-game. In game, it really does work to launch sudden mass charges with your whole army. And so, I'm kind of sad that they don't do it. Kind of not, because historically they wouldn't, but I kind of am because it would work better if they did. I'm gonna move Harland back, because he's just taken way too many casualties. I've lost seven guns out of that one unit. Um, and I don't, it's unnecessary. I should have moved them before now. The, look at Frank, he's got only one death. Now Harlan does have twice as many kills, but I don't think 300 extra kills is worth losing more than half of an artillery unit. 
Can you shoot him, please? Yes, there you go. Oh, we're having a little bit of a, uh, a ghost soldier problem here, looks like. My troops are, uh, glitching out in a major way. Oh, okay, we fixed it. It was Ferrero's fault, clearly. Alright, so zooming out to get the overview. Um, the Union attacks are being beaten back on all fronts. Siegfried has racked up kills comparable to the frontline units and zero deaths, which is what I like to see in my veteran units. Look at his stats. Look at that. 100, 100, 100. 85, 70, 72. Not bad, Siegfried. I like you. You can stay. Maney, getting there. 284, but a 91 in firearms. I need to give Maney's units some CS Richmonds because, oh boy, he deserves them. Okay, so as historically, the Union assaults on Mary's Heights have so far been an unmitigated disaster. He has inflicted casualties. Not saying they haven't. But... All these units pretty much came in with 2,000 men, or about that. Uh, I think I've destroyed more than half of the right Grand Division, and a significant fraction of the center as well. And it's not over. Enemy continues the attack. General, this is a hard fight, and we can still claim victory if we hold at least two strategic locations. Mary's Heights must be held at all costs. Telegraph Road must not be weakened because the Union may try to seize that location and cut our army into two pieces. The rest of our forces are engaged at our right flank. Okay, so... So we have to hold Telegraph Road and Mary's Heights. Um, I don't know if they're going to expand the map further, because if they do, if they're going to link all three into one engagement... Ooh. Because what I want to do right now is I want to take some of these units and swing them up to flank the dreadfully weakened Union forces, especially because I suspect that more Union reinforcements are going to be coming in. I suspect that the Center Grand Division is going to start to attack, although it is late in the day. It's already 4.30 p.m. Um, so by this time, all the attacks should already be well underway. Um... See, they tell me not to weaken Telegraph Road here, but I am. I'm going to do that. Uh, especially because all my units are just kind of, like, slapped out here willy-nilly. Like, what? So, if you could go across there, where would you go? Like, how would you move? Could you just move across the river? You can. Alright, let's get Otis across the river as well. And then... This is Second Corps. We do have leisure down here, but we might want to hold that as well. I don't think there are any enemy units coming in this direction, um, but just in case, we'll put Ammon over there, and more. We have Bartlett holding that area, so we'll put some artillery in there, and some artillery right there. We have Harker up front. We'll put Duchesne in that artillery position. That leaves Colquitt and Newell. Come on, Colquitt. No, oh, fine. We'll move Newell and Colquitt both forward, along with Hines to there, and kind of see what can be seen. Let's split off some skirmishers, actually. Send Hines skirmishers down that way, just to see what'll happen. We have another three hours before the battle is officially resolved. Here's good old General Lee. Oh, and I have some cavalry as well. That's right. Okay, so send out the cavalry. We do have a supply wagon coming up from this side, which is suspicious. Oh, Wilcox is heavily engaged, but Buchanan is not going to enjoy what's about to happen to him. Come on, Wilcox, hold. You can do it. You can hold. I know you can. Kemper is... Oh, Kemper's wounded. Shoot. All right, Cabell. Move back around that way. I want you to take Kemper's place. You're not as good, but you have a lot more men. Okay, there's artillery moving up from this direction. 
Ah. General Wilcox is moving forward. So... We have Harker right here. He has M1855s. So he can't quite cover that angle. Duchesne. What we need is just to extend the line. So Otis. Siegfried's doing fine. Cabell's moving over this way. Kemper is about to retreat. Otis. Um, I don't think I actually need to reinforce the north, though. The north is doing okay. And these units are all so badly beaten up that they barely outnumber me at this point. What I need to deal with is this, because we have some fresh units coming in that are going to land on Statum. So I think Otis needs to replace Statum, who has more than scored all the kills he needs. Heinz, meanwhile... Actually, Heinz is skirmishers. See if you can't, like, snipe leisure, cause some chaos... Durell, meanwhile, can move down this way and try to kill this artillery if it's unguarded. Von Hind skirmishers, get that shot off. Yep, and then fall back. Job. Alright, you two trade positions. Now, Statum, you still have 2,000 soldiers, so I can put you in for Mahoney if I need to. May need to pull back just a little bit. Um, I want you to keep your cover, though, so don't pull back too, too far. So what I want here, it looks like all the Union forces are moving up to throw themselves on my flank there. So, Bartlett and Hines, I want to drop right here, because I want to catch the Union offensive with a flanking maneuver of my own. And it does definitely look like they are going for an offensive. I will leave some units down here, you know, just in case. And that artillery is indeed unguarded. That's shocking. Heinz, I need you to get forward and lay a volley down on leisure. He's forming up side on to you. You should be able to get a super good first volley. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. That wasn't a super good first volley, Heinz. That was only a kind of mediocre first volley. Shoot it, Wilcox. Bartlett, get up there. Down here, my cavalry are slaughtering artillerymen, which is fine. That's what I wanted. Move up. Yeah, I think you're going to take Mahoney's place. Kemper. Okay, Kemper. Fall back. General Wilcox is wounded. That's okay. Kemper, take that position. Actually, uh, you need to go around to the back, though. Parker, move up into the swamp there. Newell up like that. Pull quit up like that. Yep, we are going to move forward into the open. We can afford to do so. We're destroying the enemy artillery quite handily. Harland is retreating from the sheer amount of fire we're laying down on him. And next to go will be Leisure. Christ, meanwhile, is just standing there like he doesn't know what's going on. Tyler... I'm not sure what Tyler is doing. Getting shot, mostly, I think. Then again, move up. Then again, has only five guns. Who is he? Oh, that's the, the short battery that I created. Come on, Bartlett. Come on, Hines. Move forward and kill him. Your two brigades to his one, and you're better. Hind skirmishers take out that artillery. That artillery is broken forever, so I'll now move my cavalry up. And take care of Osborne as well. Q 
Buchanan's routing. Capel really has not covered himself with glory in comparison to many of my other units here. That was pretty good, though. I liked that. Come on, Ledger, just break already. Break. There goes Ledger breaking. And Christ is in the river, so this is going to be super painful for him. Parker, just move up there. There's no one else to the south. There just isn't. Up, oh, Ledger's reformed. Hines is having trouble, though, unfortunately. No, charge. I hate it when I press the wrong button, and I do it constantly. There we go. Get that artillery massacred. Could you shoot at Christ, maybe? No? Okay. I wonder why Christ isn't taking casualties with any speed. Okay, so I think we've got this more or less under control, except I, I need Bartlett to get across the river before Christ. Yeah, there, now we've got Christ in the river. Now Christ is in the river. That was what we needed. And Durrell is escorting yet more Federal artillery off the field. Bartlett did get a little flanked, but he's fine. Tyler, meanwhile, is making a move around my flank. The cheeky little... How dare he? Well, we are going to see what Siegfried's skirmishers think about that. And I doubt that it'll be very complimentary. Meanwhile, Durrell can move up. The Union is reforming, but the attack against my flank has been stopped dead by Third Corps. Also, I just noticed, and I should have noticed this a long time ago, that this is in Arabic numerals and this is in Roman numerals. How embarrassing. Okay, Bartlett, you don't need to take any more casualties. You can just fall back, while my artillery down here continues the bombardment. Um, unit-wise, I could move all these guys up, but I kind of want to leave them just for insurance, just, you know, in case somebody does come down here. They'll provide resistance for long enough. Long enough for me to get more units down in the way. Um, I would be worried about this, but all these units are so small at this point. They're just not functional. They're not functional units anymore. I want Siegfried skirmishers in those fortifications ASAP. Laying down some fire on Tyler. Who's charging? That's the charging music. Who's doing it? Who's launching a charge? Oh, crap! It is all of the Federal Arc Cavalry. Okay, well, run away, Durrell. Just run. You're not. Okay. Never mind. Charge in and die bravely, then. That is all you can do when you're caught out by four times your number of Federal Cavalry. Yep, Durrell surrendered. Hines, meanwhile, needs to fall back and reform to face the absolute swarm of cavalry that is coming towards him. And all of the artillery needs to retarget on them, too. Hold your ground, Hines. Fire. Fire, they're coming right for you. Fire. 
There you go. You also fire, Newell. Come on, do it. Do it. Drop the canister. You know you want to. Canister. Canister! That wasn't canister, that was shell. I mean, decent, but... Oh, come on, Heinz. Did you seriously not get off a single volley? Shoot Devin. Shoot him. Shoot him. Why are you shooting backwards? What is that? I don't know what just happened. But Devin just made a terribly poor decision. That just happened. And now he needs artillery support quickly before everything goes to crap. Meanwhile, Tyler is still in a standoff with Siegfried's skirmishers. Brigadier General Eric Otis is wounded. That's okay. Otis, I have great faith in your ability to handle things. Heinz is pursuing enemy cavalry, which isn't necessarily the very smartest thing he could be doing. Especially not when he pursues them directly into musket range of an enemy infantry brigade. Okay, Bartlett, get down here and save the day, please. The day freaking needs saving. So it was a good idea to leave these units down here, because otherwise that cavalry could have swept around and just taken care of the business. Greg needs taken care of. That's some business that needs shooting. Otherwise he's just going to try to ride Hines down. Beyond that... The battle line is quite static. We've we've reached equilibrium, where the Union just keeps charging in, getting slaughtered, and running away again. And Heinz has reformed. Bully for Heinz. We're going to move Newell back a bit, and we can put Heinz right where he is, safely out of range of Christ. And now we can fast forward again, I think. The only mildly interesting action is happening up here between Siegfried Skirmishers and Tyler. And all that's happening is Siegfried Skirmishers slaughtering Tyler. Who is not having any luck breaking the line. We did lose our cavalry. Again. Because losing cavalry is what I do best. I am bad at managing my cav. Sorry, it's just, it's just true. There's nothing else I can say about it. Cavalry is my weakness. Let's move Bartlett right up here. No, never mind. Yeah, okay, if Christ is falling back, let's move Bartlett right up there. Get some flank shots on Barry. Like that. Here comes some cavalry. On a death ride. Not gonna end well, Gable. Hines come up right about there. Okay, so he's run away. Wait. That is a supply wagon. That is a routing supply wagon. Who's charging? Oh, Greg. And Devon. Not a good idea. And Gable, for that matter. They really want Heinz. They want him bad. Shoot, Gable. There's Pleasanton, the Union Cavalry Commander. I'm going to see if I can get in range to give him a volley. Yes, I can. Didn't kill him, though. Unfortunate. Let's see if Greg is stupid enough to yet yeah, charge him. See, the thing about cavalry 
is that yes, they're good in melee for what they are, but what they are is very small units. So being good in melee as a very small unit does not mean that you're going to defeat a unit of 1700. See, Heinz, even though he has he's fighting two units and has artillery coming in on him, is still doing fine. He's still giving as good as he's getting. Those supplies are routing. I'm going to go capture them. Well, I only have 16 minutes. I don't think I'm going to reach them before I before they run. Here comes Gable again. That? Jeez, Gable. There's no call to be suicidal about it. Give him a volley, Heinz. Give him a volley. You're just kind of giving him desultory single shots when I asked for a volley. Alright, let's pull these guys back to the cav- back to the artillery, not back to the cavalry, back away from the cavalry. Nine minutes. Let's see if we can actually capture those supplies. They're stuck against the edge of the map. Six. Supplies. And charge. Three. Two. Yeah, we captured them. They are empty, unfortunately. Confederate right at stake. There's another part to this battle? Holy crap. How long have I been recording? I forgot to start my timer. I don't know how long I've been recording. We're just going to finish this. Okay, let's see. Yep, here we are. The fight on the Confederate right continues. Oh! So now we get the third core. Your Magleton skirmishers. Right, okay, we have another three and a half hours. It's already 7.30 at night. This fight didn't go on this long. That's not how this went. But we now have Third Corps, so Third Corps is going to come down on the back of the Union Army like the proverbial ton of bricks. Assuming they can get here in time, of course. Which is, you know, an assumption. Especially because I'm not going to run them, because if I do, they'll be absolutely exhausted by the time they arrive. So, the main question then will be, can... Second Corps hold out in this less than ideal position long enough for Third Corps to come and rescue them. Especially Price. Price is in a bad way. Now, Russell is also in a bad way, but perhaps not quite as bad a way. Rowley, just kill Jones, please. Please kill him. Well, Bayard has charged, which is unfortunately the most effective thing he could do. It's drawn Rowley out of position. But I need Rowley to be back in that exact same position that he was in. Okay, here comes Meredith finally doing something. Magleton, I don't think, can leave his post. So it's up to Magleton's skirmishers. Stoneman's third corps is attacking. Crap. Crap, crap, crap. Okay, well, this is what we've got. Leisure, yeah, Leisure needs to move up there. War needs to move up here. Okay, I actually am going to have to cut this short. I think I've been going for a while, and I don't believe I'm going to finish this battle right at the moment. I will send Ammon down south. The rest of Third Corps is going to have to hold off this attack from the north. But, fortunately... The third corps, it looks like, has already been beaten to crap, because look at Barry. He's down to 1,300, 1,400 men out of his original complement of, I believe, over 2,000. So, shouldn't be all that bad. In any case, thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate each and every one of you, my viewers. If you liked this video, leave a like, leave a comment, say something about the battle, uh, remind me of a historical fact that I've missed. I love it when people do that. 
Uh, but and consider subscribing to the channel as well, and more content like this will be coming your way on the regular. So thank you once again, and I will see you all in the next one.